in this segment, we look at the cost aspect of our inventory management policy with periodic review and dynamic demand. So we have worked out that uh, the two numbers went to order every T days. That's based on uh, management decision. Um, how many to order? That's based on the target inventory level M minus the quantity of inventory that we actually counted at the time of visit. So we have the two numbers. We know how to operate it now with the two numbers. The question is how much cost are we incurring uh, every year? So to write a formula for that, we need to have some sort of uh, reasoning. And the reasoning is kind of a repeat of the EOQ formula and the continuous review. So the idea is we have annual um, setup cost. We have annual holding cost. for cycle stock. So what is cycle stock? Cycle stock is that part of the inventory that we keep and hold because it is the average demand. It is meant to meet the average demand. That part of the stock that we hold is meant to meet demand, meant for sale. Do you mean that there is a part of the stock that we hold and we don't mean it for sale and that's true right and that's called safety stock okay the idea of safety stock is the same as um, what we had earlier on in the continuous review model with dynamic demand so so if we look at the formula for m which is basically the uh, assuming that the demand is normally distributed this portion is the average demand and this is going to be our cycle stock so we have this amount in our warehouse that part of the M that we have in our warehouse is to meet average demand that's meant for sale this part of the inventory that we hold is not meant for sale it is our safety stock we may sell it occasionally because we are trying to borrow from our own little piggy bank the safety stock itself uh, to meet temporary unexpected surge in demand but it is quickly uh, replenished uh, once the delivery is up and then the leftover will be meant for sale okay so again very much like the calculation of cost in um, in uh, continuous review with probabilistic demand, we have three components and the three components look very much like the formulas found in continuous review with probabilistic demand. So annual setup cost is going to be the setup cost per transaction, per order, times the annual demand which is going to be the average annual demand because annual demand now also fluctuates because daily demand fluctuates divided by uh, daily demand times t in terms of days hmm. like structure kind of looks similar right because daily demand times t but that term was originally uh, occupied by q the order quantity the fixed order quantity but now we don't have quantity fixed so what should we do we find a proxy right we'll talk about that let's finish up first we might expect that whenever Q appears in the continuous review dynamic demand case right whenever Q appears we'll change it to D bar times capital T and that much is true so we have H <clears throat> times half of Q so we're going to replace that and finally, for holding the safety stock, we have H times Z times sigma of T plus L. That much is true. Okay. So now let's take a look at why is it that 
we simply follow the same style the, the the formula looks almost exactly the same right except when q appears we replace it with d bar times t <clears throat> the daily demand times t to do to to kind of understand that let's look at our inventory level graph again yeah now um it looks quite messy here but I'll try not to de erase anything and overlay on top uh, a triangle if possible. Okay, so notice this triangle here. All right. It is probably not going to be exactly um, perfect, but it comes pretty close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, increase this a little bit just to emphasize. Okay. So the idea is that um, even though there are some zigzags along the way because of changing demands, uh, and that might lead to a larger base triangle, shrinking base triangle, right? And the height will be different. But um, the idea is that if we can sort of adjust our triangle and find a suitable fixed size triangle to um, kind of sweepingly and uh, with, with a bit of daring assumption, assume that this fixed size triangle represents um, with very little error all the cycles. So some cycles is quite wrong, for example, this one. But of course, we are in business, so the next cycle will not be the same. We'll try to make promotions and sell, and maybe customers are away on holidays, and so they come back, they will have pent up demand. So the next cycle, there'll be a higher uh, demand, and so making up, right? So let's assume, first of all, that it is safe to make this assumption that we can find a suitable um, right angle triangle, fixed sized, and it is. We, it is able to let us replicate across without overlap. Okay. Notice that if we can do that, and it is quite possible, quite easy, quite likely that we can do this. If we can do this, then we basically have um, found a way to model the changing demand with a constant demand equivalent. I'm not saying physically it's the same. I'm saying in terms of cost incurred activity on the on paper in theory it's kind of similar right and we can um, make all the calculations and estimations and formula substitutions way easier than if we have to uh, you know literally track all the whims and fancies of the little curves and dents so if we are back to this then it is quite easy to say that is there a way to estimate the height of the triangle because if there is then it becomes quite easy to say that the average inventory level is um, half the height. Remember in the continuous review case with EOQ basic constant demand model, uh, the height was Q and the average inventory was half of that, Q over 2. So the question is, can we find a way to estimate, or if not exactly calculate, the height of this constant triangle? And the answer is yes. Yeah, because the reason why we have constant triangle is that we have made an order and we only make an order every t days. So it is safe to say that the base of the triangle is actually t days. Okay, so the base of the triangle is t. And what about the height? Well, uh, we can then say that if it is a constant demand, right, and you consume everything in T days, then it has to be the average daily demand per day times how many days that will finish it up. And the only right thing to say is therefore that the height has to be, the height has to be uh, to finish up the height in T days, then the height has to be basically d bar, the average demand, times t. 
don't you think? Okay, so we'll have V bar times T. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. So if the daily demand is D bar, which is the which is the case, that's why we call it daily demand, right? The average daily demand D bar. Um, every day, D bar number of tires will be sold, and we assume it's constant, right? If we finish all that we have in our inventory in T days, capital T days, then how many tires are we? Uh, supposed to have started off with it has to be d bar times t okay so that is the point now that we know the height of the triangle then the rest is easy what's an average inventory level in the cycle such that we can just multiply by h and get the annual inventory cost and that has to be h times d bar times t how many triangles are there in a year, roughly estimated ballpark? Well, annual demand, annual average demand, capital D bar, divided by a little d bar times t. Okay, so, so far so good? All right, so because of that, we can now come back to our writing just now and observe that it will be just exactly the formula we saw in continuous review um, with dynamic demand and replacing the presence of Q with little d bar daily average daily demand times T the review period.